Islam and Gender Equality Emancipation, Modernization and Re-Islamization Egalitarian approaches to understanding Islam have been there from the beginning, but they were less influential and they did not get the authority and legitimacy the way the patriarchal ones did, having been more suited to the social and cultural norms of those societies. Taking Mary, Jesus' mother, and a receiver of God's word as the perfect example. Islamic jurists, such as Ibn Hazm, considered the woman to be as chosen as the man. The Quran says that Jesus is God's word and that Moses' mother, Yoshebed, received a revelation from God to save her son by placing him in a basket on the Nile. The Quran uses the word revelation. However, it was translated as inspiration in Bosnian, with the explanation that women were not prophets and did not receive revelations but inspirations. Even the well-known theologian Ibn Taymiyyah, who is often quoted by the more conservative groups in Islam, thought that a woman could head a congregational prayer of both men and women, but she should not stand in front of men so as to avoid distracting them. Therefore, there are no theological arguments against female imam, but cultural reasons which force the segregation of sexes and even exclusion of women. However, at the end of the 19th century, reforming ideas appeared in certain Muslim countries, such as Egypt, Iran and Turkey, which demanded a redefinition of women's position in family and society and their inclusion in modern social trends. At the time, Qasim Amin, an Egyptian, wrote The Liberation of Women, which is considered the predecessor of Islamic feminism. Additionally, processes of women's emancipation started with the establishment of the first women's associations, production of feminist texts and formation of women's unions, which fought for women's rights to leave the house without a veil, as well as to educate themselves, vote and be politically active after colonial liberation. Emancipation movements in the 20th century in Iran, Turkey and Egypt to an extent have been marked by two main reversals. The first one occurred in the 1920s and 1930s when the unveiling of women became a symbol of modernity and liberation from colonialism and imperialism. At the time, the image of the modern unveiled woman was constructed via national awakening. Conversely, the second overturn happened during re-Islamization in the 1970s and 1980s, when veiled women in the context of re-establishing Islamic rules and norms became a symbol of liberation and emancipation. Hence, women's bodies and sexuality have served as a battlefield between modernization and re-Islamization of Muslim societies for unveiling and veiling women while misusing their subjectivity for the purpose of daily politics. Feminisms Although the feminist idea appeared already at the end of the 19th century, the notion of feminism is used in the Muslim world in the 1920s. There are three key periods of feminism development in the Muslim societies. The invisible feminism from 1860 to 1920, which we find in literature and middle and upper class women's poetry. Then the period of women's social activism propagated by women's rights advocates from 1920 to 1960. And the third period from 1970 until now, when the feminist expressions for rights and freedoms in Muslim countries are being revived. Additionally, there are different forms of feminist action and different categories. But the key division is between secular and Islamic feminism. Secular feminism is mostly concerned with questions of gender equality in the public sphere, whereas Muslim feminism takes religion as one of the arguments in the fight for equality. In contrast to atheist feminism's view of religion as an issue to be overcome in the process of achieving gender equality. On the other hand, Islamic feminism tries to redefine women's position in the public and private sphere using the text of the Quran as the basis and framework for its action. In the early 1960s, 
Muslim women and men started to deal with the feminist theology more seriously and to read the sacred text of the Quran and Prophet's tradition from a female as well as a gender-sensitive perspective. This approach led to a significant proliferation of literary works by authors such as Rifat Hassan, Aziza Al-Hibri, Amina Vadud, Fatih Osman, Asma Barlas, Omid Safi, Khalid Abu El Fadl, and many others who offered a framework for a more egalitarian cosmology of gender relations. This cosmology stipulates a triad of God at the top and a man and woman on the same level below, inferior to God, obliged to work together on promoting good and competing in good deeds. The egalitarian vision of Islam refers to the basic principles of Islam coded in the text of the Quran, and those are hilafat, women and men as vicegerents, taqwa, piety, and evliya, acting in the spirit of friendship and protection. Hilafat. God informs angels in the Quran that he will create women and men as successors, a vicegerent endowed with reason and free will who will be responsible for ruling the world as a morally upright being. It was the human and not the man who was entrusted with being Khalifa and because of that they will be held accountable. Every soul for what it has earned will be retained. Although there's a collective responsibility for community leaders, in Islam everything is based on individual responsibility, which prevents hiding behind authority and power and forgetting khilafat. Taqwa. Women and men are biologically different, but they are ontologically equally created by God, with equal gifts of reason, intellect and free will, upon which is based both their dignity as humans and responsibility of free-thinking beings. There are no differences in religion based on an identity and the only differentiating criterion established by God for all human beings, not just Muslims, is taqwa or piety. Taqwa represents the highest human level of consciousness, meaning that everything one does is done with the entrusted vicegerent in mind. Evliya Ethics of Friendship and Protection There's a platform for collaborative work of women and men in the Quran, which encompasses almost all social and political activity in the verse 71 of the ninth surah, al taba The believing men and believing women are allies of one another. They enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong, and establish prayer and give zakat and obey Allah and his messenger. Those, Allah will have mercy upon them. Indeed, Allah is exalted in might and wise. This verse opens the possibilities of creating responsible citizens who individually feel responsible for promoting good and preventing evil within the ethics framework of friendship, helping, understanding and respect, and not in the spirit of competition and opposing agendas and goals. The ethics of friendship cannot be conducted if there is discrimination, authoritarian rule, exclusion and negating and reducing of women to their biological function of motherhood. Biological differences cannot be neglected, however the primordial definition of humans as conscious and moral beings obligates women to act responsibly. Finally, we conclude that the egalitarian cosmology of gender relations insists on partnership because God created everything in pair, even men and women, in order for them to find peace with each other. If gender relations are seen within the framework of vicegerency, moral uprightness and friendship ethics, then the questions of marriage, sexuality, inheritance and testimony are regulated by viewing women and men as equal partners.